Hey guys, welcome to another video on next generation sequencing data analysis. In this video, we will dive into more of what we can do with the R package TCR. In the previous video, go ahead and watch that one first if you haven't seen that one. We discussed how to install um, TCR, the R package, and um, we parsed, we loaded in our sequencing data that we have first aligned. We didn't do that in the video though because we did a sample one in the second video or third video. I don't actually remember where we did the MyXCR videos. In one of those videos, I showed you guys how to align your data with using MyXCR. So that's what I did here. And then I loaded in my three files. You can use your own or you can use the ones that I have right here. Um, I've told you which ones I've used in a video before. So let's go ahead and do our first analysis. Let's say we want to make a graph that shows us how much space or how much clonal proportion is taken up by our, by our top n clones. So let me just show you what this graph means. This graph means um, that almost 25% of the repertoire of this sample, subject A right here in this example picture, 25%, almost 25% are taken up by the top 10 clones. So clones between one and 10 make up this much. Clones between zero, yeah, right here, all the way to just above 50% are made up of all the top 100 clones. The top n clones mean uh, means the clones that are the most expanded. So the, the ones that you find the most in your repertoire, okay? If I give you the example of our file one right here, the top 10 most expanded clones are these here, from one to 10, okay? So this one right here, this clone is the most most expanded clone. And with a graph like this, we can quickly visualize, well, how much is, is it of the whole repertoire? Let's go ahead and make this, because this is really easy, see? We just need these commands. You can either use this command, top.proportion, and print this out in uh, as a, um, as in, in a written form and you can save it as a text file. So let's do that. We will write it in our R script right here. So we go ahead and write down uh, top dot proportion, open brackets, and then we write, ah, sorry, first we have to do following. I forgot this. You need to first, um, you need to first put your three files into one list. You do this by giving your list a name. So we choose a name for our object. We call our object experiment. Make the error. And now you create a list with R by typing list, open bracket, close bracket. And then you just call for uh, the objects that you have created before. And you just press enter or because I'm in the editor, I hold down CTRL, press enter. And now I have made a list, a large list with three elements. They're all in one. And now we can do this. Yeah, now we can say, top dot proportion um, now we write down experiment okay if you now define by typing in comma 10 it will give you the information on the top 10 clones for all of these three files so we can do that hold down ctrl press enter and there you go it says it right here it printed out the proportions for the top 10 most expanded files you have 75 percent of our first file is made up of of just the first 10 most expanded clones. That is a lot. So that, you know, there's something skewed, there's something not wrong. This is not very natural unless, no, actually no, unless there's, it's not very natural, but if you think about it, you know, you only have seven, uh, 748 clones in total. So, you know, this is obviously, there's, there, we would have to know the background of the experiment of this uh, file to be able to make interpretations. So now, Let's visualize this. This is what I love about R. Look how beautiful this is going to look and how fast you make a really nice graph. We write down this dot top proportions. I get this from here. Okay. I, I always follow the documentation. Even although I know everything here, I still follow the documentation because it makes it a lot easier. And then we call uh, for our object experiment, our list that we've created. CTRL enter. Now look at this. It will create a graph right here. Okay. This is a vector gra graph, guys. So that means, you know, you can zoom in and zoom out as much as you want. The quality is gonna stay amazing, perfect for publication, or perfect for editing with uh, Illustrator or whatever. So here you go. This is your 
this your graph and we can tell look this repertoire right here now with one glance you can tell it's not very diverse you know the most 75 percent is made up of the top 10 clones and you know you can tell here this one is the the more di the most diverse clone um repertoire but then again you have to take under consideration this one also has 4,000 clones compared to these two that have only uh, between 600 and 800 clones right so that's something to take under consideration when you look at this very interesting so what else can we do let's see what other graphs we can create i i'm going to stick with the graphs and we go to st statistical data look at this clonal space homeostasis also a very interesting graph it shows you how much of the repertoire is taken up by clones that are considered rare small medium large or hyper expanded or you can define these values by yourself you can define what you want to call as rare small medium large or hyper expanded and you can even change the naming as well so this is all something we can we can learn here as well so let's now create this graph look how fast it goes okay you just type in right here we first create um we first have to create one like you have to follow the documentation one object that is called some simply you can call it whatever you want but that has this command in it so we go there and do this we call this experiment dot space make the arrow and write down clonal dot space it already suggests it for you so you just have to press tab and it auto completes it for you and now you write down experiment yeah ctrl enter it saved that one now and now you write down this so for visualize obviously clonal space and now you call for the object you just created experiment.space press enter there we go that's our graph now look at that by the way you can save this graph obviously you can just go export and save it as a pdf i would recommend pdf because then it's saved as a vector graph um obviously it's not going to be distorted like this that's just because i open it like that you can change the window size and then it's going to look much nicer however you like it to be um so that's some more information we get again we see here you know look at that 75 percent are considered hyper expanded you know they are considered according to what you created here as a detail what else can we do this is an interesting one right here go down here um just gonna go through some more graphs that are really nice okay this is cool too we'll go we come back to that one um i want to show you guys this one okay so this is the repertoire overlap the repertoire overlap analysis this one shows you between sample d and some sample a how much overlap between clonotypes do you find how similar although are, are those repertoires to each other really nice so you can just type in r here we follow their um follow their documentation right here so let's go ahead and type down this right here go rep capital letter o overlap and then we write experiment so what kind of method do we want to use we stick with the default exact and next it asks you what are you looking what are you looking to overlap are you looking to overlap your nucleotides or or maybe you want to overlap your look at this your amino acids okay so we do this amino acids do you want your if you we're talking tcr data right do we want them these uh, amino acids also to include the exact same v gene that's gonna make it a lot more specific uh, we're gonna stick with no so we're just gonna leave that one out and now we're gonna add um do we want this to be normalized i'll explain what that means we'll just say t for true we can also write out true if you want for now uh, verbose it, it just means that it explains sort of what it does we'll just leave that out right now and just type in ctrl enter and it it's giving you the the um, sort of written form of this graph right here you know but we want it to be as a graph as well so how do we do the graph basically you just you can save it look it says it right here you can say you can add a this heat map before that and put this in the brackets of that yeah so we will just do that as well before this we write down this heat map open brackets and we close the brackets right here at the very end and uh, look we could also 
if you go back here we can also add um, a title you know um, for uh, for this graph which will be right here we leave that out for now we just execute this command and look at that that looks nice right here we have now our um, heat map that sort of explains how similar two samples are so look similar sample two and sample one seem to be in this context quite similar compared to the rest of the samples compared to each other so what does this number mean this number is described in their documentation it's normalized meaning let me find the sentence right here so that would be sort of the overlap coefficient that says um, right here it measures the overlap between two sets and it's defined as the size of the intersection divided by the smaller of the size of the two sets and you need to do this overlap for uh, this normalization for a specific reason that's because if you compare two sets with each other that are highly different from the you know the read count like this one is 4000 read counts and this one is 700 then just having having a number that says well you have 50 similar clonotypes it's it's difficult to interpret your data like that because i mean what the, what do those 50 mean if one sample is extremely large and the other one is very small uh, that's kind of it, it's not very scientific we can uh, still change it though just uh, write down false here and then press ctrl um, enter right there and it will change it now so now we know in this between these two files you have sample two sample one we have 60 identical clones that are shared between these two samples and this is very nice especially if you have more than three uh, samples it's nice to spot a specific pattern um, of course though I would always stick with the normalized method it's just more accurate to see because remember how look this is considered orange in this one right it's considered highly uh, sort of uh, I am similar but if we go false here it it, it changes to being blue it actually you know suddenly look at that suddenly between sample um one second between sample three and sample two we now have uh, 267 similar uh, uh similar clonotypes what so this is a lot but taking under consideration that the numbers in three are four thousand and in in in, in two it's just you know it's just 660 that actually doesn't uh, is not that significant so that's why I always stick with the with the true um you know with the normalized method okay what else can we do this is this is fun right um let's do one more thing uh, let's go ahead and do the some di diversity evaluation so this is like now statistical um uh, calculations let's see how um diverse are our repertoires for this we can use the infer inverse simpson index for example the inverse simpson index okay so it computes the diversity as the inverse probability of choosing two similar clonotypes how do we do this we go ahead and just type down what they have written right here uh, rep diversity or really uh, whoops diversity open and close brackets our list experiment and now we write down inf dot simp because that's what you know their documentation tells us to do when we want to inverse simpson score and we wanted to do it using the read proportions column if we open this there's going to be different well, we have it right here we wanted to use read proportions this column to calculate that right that's what we type in and now we press enter and uh, that's you know these are the inverse simpson numbers this lower part right here is actually the exact same command that is used here but they have in their package basically condensed it into this short thing so you don't have to type in all this all of this stuff okay so now we have right here written down these um the inverse simpson scores this one is very low because that one ha is not very diverse so we know we already saw it in our other plots that um, sample one 75 percent were made up of the first 10 clonotypes so not very diverse and these ones are more diverse i would say that uh, 
This is for now enough for working with TCR. You can go through the documentation and learn much more, see what you want to use for, for your experiments and do all of these analysis. One more thing that I just want to um, show you guys is what you could, you know, you can save this information as a text file and you do this by 